Let's do this. We're in a series. We're in a series. We're in a series, guys. And, uh, and I know the time has been well spent, but I believe that somebody wants to hear the word today. Do I got five people who want to hear the word today? All right. Uh, we've been in a series called The Holy Spirit. And in this particular series, we've been looking at the person, power, and presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we believe that the Holy Spirit is one of the most misunderstood and underdeveloped relationships in the body of Christ. And we believe that's a tragedy that we're attempting to address throughout this series. And we, one, we preached a sermon called Let Me Upgrade You, where we talked about uh, the person of God, God as uh, Holy Spirit as God, Holy Spirit as helper, and Holy Spirit as life-giving. Uh, and we talked about the fact that the Holy Spirit is not extra to our Christian walk, but essential. And then in week two, we preached a sermon called It's an Inside Job. Where we begin to talk about how the Holy Spirit wants to be active in our life through the function of clarity and, and courage and conviction and having a proper theological perspective of conviction. We even talked about the Holy Spirit's work when it comes to communication because the Holy Spirit doesn't just tell us how to talk. The Holy Spirit tells us when to talk and tells us sometimes that it's not necessary to talk. And so we have been looking at that and I encourage you to go back and watch week one and week two of this series here in week three here in week three we're going to dive into what i believe is the last of the foundational teachings around the holy spirit from this point forward we're going to start to unpack some of the more specific areas like expression of the holy spirit and how to see the holy spirit as friend and comforter and counselor and strengthener more specifically but today we'll kind of lay the final piece cornerstone of understanding the holy spirit in a foundational way so i want to take your attention to genesis chapter one Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. King James, New King James Version said this. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. Somebody say dominion. Over the fish in the sea, over the birds in the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish in the sea, over the birds in the air, and over every living thing that moves the earth. I want to read one more passage. Galatians 5, Galatians 5, 16 through 18. New Living Translation says this. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide our lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is the opposite of what the Spirit wants. Wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. Anybody ever woke up with good intentions and then somebody cut you off on the way to work? Come on here. Anybody ever had good intentions when a conversation started and then by the middle of the conversation you was like, you're going to get what you get today. But your intentions we're good. What Paul says is, in the midst of those good intentions, there becomes a war between what the nature of the Spirit wants to accomplish and the sinful nature wants to accomplish. But when you are directed by the Spirit, verse 18, you are not under the obligation of the law of Moses. I want to preach from this thought today in part three of this series, Do It For The Culture. Do it for the culture. Thank you so much. Do it for the culture. Uh, one of the things that I know and I believe you know is that culture is all around us. Each and every day. It was Brian Wynn who wrote, culture is like the wind. It is invisible, but you can always see it and feel it. Culture is always evident. You have workplace culture. Some of you got a job, thought it was going to be one culture. They promised you it would be on the mission statement. And then you got in that thing and was like, the culture here is not what y'all said it is. For some of you, you experience culture from your neighborhood or from your family background. I love the way culture shows up. I love the way culture specifically shows up in the world around us, in our everyday lives. We all experience culture. I got to just speak about me for a second. Like, I, I come in from a family where you can see and feel culture all the time. Okay, let me make it plain. I can smell culture. Come on, culture is the smell of grandmama cooking greens all day with the ham in the oven. And you can just, the aroma in the room. 
Sm it, it smells, the seasoning is culture. You can smell the rolls from the morning time. It, it smells like culture in here. You can, you can taste culture in the food. Come on, everybody has some chitlins. Come on here. Y'all ain't said nothing in here. I don't know. I know I won't have a 20 witnesses. You can taste culture in the seasoning of grandmama. Come on here. You, it's the way she put, come on, the type of seasoning that didn't measure nothing. Just said they dropped it in until it felt right. Culture, culture. You can sense it. You can smell it. You can taste it. it you, you can it smell it when you think of hot combs and cocoa butter. Come on here. Smell it. Culture. Somebody say culture. You can even hear culture in the language of people you know and friends you have and family. It's just things you say to each other, things you pick up on, but that only you can say to each other. You'd be like, that's just the culture around here. That's just how we talk. That's just how we get done. Matter of fact, it's so strong a culture that you can say some things, but then if somebody else tries to say it, you'd be like, uh-uh, wait a minute. You don't understand what's happening here. You can't say that, boo. No, it's because it's a culture thing. Culture's all around us. And there comes moments in all of our lives where we respond a certain way, where we say a certain thing, where we act a certain way. And when people ask us, why would you do that? That seems a little strange. You say, I'm just doing it for the culture. And I got to wondering, in all that we do for the culture, we do some things for work culture. We do some things because it's our family culture. We do some things because it is... Maybe our ethnic culture. I want to ask you this question today. What do you do for kingdom culture? When people look at the way you act, the way you live, the way you respond, can they see and experience the culture you are called to represent clearly? Can they see kingdom culture on you and in you and through your conversations? Can you see culture? It's important that we understand this because God's plan for the earth was for us to introduce a culture. Prove it to you. We see this in the original mandate given in Genesis. What does God say? He says, I want you to have dominion. I want you to have authority. I want you to subdue and fill the earth. I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. And he says, I want you to do all those things. Why? Not for your own benefit. Not because you can just promote your own agenda. What is he saying? I want you to bring my culture to the earth. I've given you an assignment. I've given you a mandate to bring culture to the earth. Maybe you're saying, Vernon, that's Old Testament. Where do we see that in the New Testament? Well, we see it in the prayer that Jesus gives us to pray daily. Let's all say it together. If you know it, it's called the Lord's Prayer. It says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? On, as it is where? In, what is he saying? He say, I have a kingdom culture that is in heaven that I want you to implement and influence the earth. We have an assignment to bring the culture of heaven to earth. And this is a constant reminder, or should be to us, that we are actually just elected ambassadors for God's government on the earth. Our assignment is to be ambassadors of God's government on the earth. Now, here's the challenge. I'm about to tell you where the Holy Spirit comes into this. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here's the challenge. It's hard to represent the host kingdom's culture if you don't know the heart and values of the king of the kingdom. This is why we need the indwelling of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is one of the same. So the Holy Spirit helps us to understand the heart and the values of the king who implements character and values in the kingdom that we are called to now implement in the earth. And this is so vital for our understanding because if we're not careful, first and foremost, we will, be, we will try to live out a life of kingdom impact without understanding our citizenship of the right kingdom. The question we first have to answer in all of our lives is do I claim citizenship with the kingdom of heaven? Do I claim citizenship? Okay, let me take it a step further. If many of us be honest, 
We don't claim citizenship. Our lives are a living example that we will affirm every other culture, but not kingdom culture. That we will claim affiliation with everything while neglecting connection and representation of God's kingdom. And so we are all being stretched, all being challenged to say in my life, how do I serve as an ambassador to the kingdom of earth from the kingdom of heaven? It's imperative that we understand this. This is what Romans 12 Verse 1 through 2 is trying to get us to understand, and the message translation says this, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. What is Paul trying to help us to understand yet again that we have a culture that we are called to implement? And this is vitally important as we understand the work of the Holy Spirit. Here it is. I want you to write this down. This is vitally important as we understand the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Because for the last two weeks, we've talked about the Holy Spirit being a helper. But I need you to understand this today. The Holy Spirit is not assigned to promote your agenda. The Holy Spirit is helping to align your actions with heaven's agenda. Here's the challenge. The challenge is we sometimes say, okay, Holy Spirit is a helper. And his assignment is to help me do whatever I desire. Holy Spirit, help me accomplish my priorities. Holy Spirit, help me accomplish and promote my agenda. No, 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 no. We are ambassadors. We are representatives. We are called to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. And so if we are to accomplish that assignment, to take dominion, to take authority, to subdue, to feel, to bring this culture of heaven to earth, we need to understand the Holy Spirit's purpose is to work in and through us so that we are more aligned with the actions and the will of heaven. We do not live for ourselves. We do not live for our own desires. But this is going to be difficult if we don't have a submitted heart. And we don't like words like that in our culture today. Words like submission. But can I tell you something today? It's going to be extremely hard for you to honor the culture of heaven if you have not first made up in your mind that you are submitted to the king of it. No amens there. It's cool. I got one. You need to understand, am I truly submitted to the kingdom and the king of heaven? Because then from that submission, I am capable with the power of the Holy Spirit of living out the character and the values of the host king and kingdom. That's what the Holy Spirit is trying to help us do. Here's the big idea. I want you to write this down. The big idea is this. A submitted heart creates a strong spirit. A submitted heart creates a strong spirit. I'll go as far to say this. This is why when you have a divided heart, your spirit is weak all the time. Because if you be honest with yourself, I'm not going to come to your role, but if you be honest with yourself, your heart is divided. Your heart is divided between your affections to this culture and affections to God's culture. And so what happens is our spirit can't empower us the way it has been designed to because we have allowed another thing to sit on the throne of our heart. It's with this in mind that we all have to make up in our minds, I want to live a submitted life so that when people ask me, why did you act that way? You say, I would have acted differently, but the way I responded was because I do something for the culture. I I would have treated you this way, but I do it for the culture. I would have lashed out on you the way I used to, but I do it for the culture. I would have cussed you out. I used to, but I do it for the culture. I would have closed the door on you, left, and divorced you, but I do it for the culture. I would have made up in my mind that I was cutting you off like I did the last five people. I can do that and sleep well, but I decided this time I was going to do something different for the culture because I'm not living for myself. I am living for another kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. And I am an ambassador. Okay, can I just make 20 people mad right here? This is why we have to be careful and ask ourselves this true question because some of us are making heaven look bad. 
because we refuse to live out the culture of the kingdom as empowered by the Holy Spirit. There's some people on your job right now who don't want to come to church and don't want to be Christians because they say, that's what Christians act like. I don't want no parts of that. Okay, there's some people in your neighborhood who will never accept an invitation because if that's what your parenting looks like. If they see how you treat your spouse, would they desire something different in their life? If they see the way you cut off people, okay. If they see the way you post, would they desire what you represent? And there's a lot of people in our world today who are looking at the lives of Christians saying, if that's what the culture of the kingdom is, I can do better somewhere else. And some folks saying, I can do bad by myself. When God is saying, no, 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 no. My kingdom and its values and its principles and its practices, which are all things that represent a culture. If you ever learn to represent my culture, you would see people desire to be a part of my kingdom. So this in mind that there's three things I want to give you today. I'm going to go real fast. I'm going to go real fast. Three things that I want you to sit with today that I think are essential for our understanding. Now, let me be very clear that each of these could be a sermon in and of itself. And so what we have reconciled that we're going to try to provide some on-demand resources at the end of this series, as well as make sure you understand all the channels in which you can dive deeper into some of these things. Like when we start talking about gifts of the Spirit, we actually have a class at our church called Full Life, eight weeks long, which talks about the gifts of the Spirit and spiritual pathways. So we want you to know we're going to make sure you have all that you need to take a practical discipleship next step to the best of our ability on the other side of this series. But I think these three areas are foundational to our understanding. Here's the first one. Here's the first one. The first thing we need to understand is the nature of kingdom culture. The nature of kingdom culture. Maybe you're saying, Vernon, what is kingdom culture? Paul endeavored to describe this to us as he imparted in first century believers, and they were a little ambiguous about what is our life Maya supposed to look like. And so what he does is he gives them a list of essential qualities that represents the character of the king and the host kingdom. He said, if you're going to live out these values, if you're going to do some things on behalf of the culture, you need to know what it looks like. This is where we bring our attention back to Galatians 5. Now, I'm going to read more of that passage for a moment, several verses. Tap your neighbor on the leg. Say, don't fall asleep. Don't fall asleep because it's going to be good for us. It's going to be good for us. Galatians 5, 16 through 25. Here's what the Amplified Version says. But I say... Walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek him and be responsive to his guidance. Okay, let me pause right there and parenthetically note, this is why Paul needs to write this, and this is why we still need it today. For so many of us, the issue is not hearing the Holy Spirit. It's responding. All right, okay, okay. I got any parents in the room? Any parents? Any parents? Any parents? Let me tell you what my Saturday sounded like. Can I tell you what my Saturday sounded like? This is what my Saturday sounded like. Hey, come over here, do that. Hey, boy, um, move that, to pick up that trash. Hey, didn't I tell you to stop doing that? Hey, it's reading time, cut the TV off. Hey, didn't I tell you to pick that up? I'll right, go, go pick that up. Hey, stop that. Hey, stop fighting with your sister. Hey, go to your room, take time out. Hey, didn't I tell you to pick this up two hours ago? Hey, blah, blah, blah. Hey, run outside, get some energy off. Hey, take a nap. Hey, wake up. Why is this still here from three hours ago? <laughs> Any parent can resonate. Like, I, I don't know what happens, like, like, at birth, like, the baby cries, but it stopped hearing. Like, what happened? Why do children have a hearing deficit for, like, a whole season of their life? <laughs> and I wonder how many of us, God is saying, you're my child and you don't listen either. That's called the setup. Yeah, we, 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 we're like... <laughs> No, that would never be me, except for God saying, no, you do it with me all the time. You hear me say, not that relationship. And you're like, buddy, cute. So I'm just not going to respond. He says, not that job, because I got something for you right here. You're like, no, 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 but the salary is higher. He says, not right now. And you say, "Mm, no, but no, 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 it's a good opportunity. So I'm going to promote my agenda over heaven's agenda. And the Lord is looking at some of us saying, no, 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 all the time I'm trying to get you to hear my voice. All the time I'm trying to get you to respond. All the time I'm trying to get you to turn. But you are busy ignoring my voice. 
And so for some of us, if we be honest, the reason we stop hearing his voice is not because he doesn't want to speak. It's because we have stopped listening. The Holy Spirit wants us to have the nature of the kingdom. So look at what Paul says. Look at what Paul says. He says, so we must not only hear the Holy Spirit and walk with him, but we must be responsive. And then you will certainly not carry out the desire of the sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regard for God and his precept. For the sinful nature has its desire, which is opposed to the spirit. And the desire of the spirit, capital S there, which always represents in scripture the spirit of God, opposes the sinful nature. For these two, the sinful nature and the spirit, are in direct opposition to each other, continually in conflict so that you as believers do not always do whatever good things you want to do but if you are guided and led by my spirit you are not subject to the law now the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident Uh oh here it is we don't like this part we skip over this part they are sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, which means total irresponsibility and lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility. And let me pause here because some of y'all are like pointing the finger already. Mm-hmm, see them first three. I know some folk who needed to hear that today. I know some folk on my road that needed that word. But watch this now. He comes to your road too. Strife. Jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions that promote heresy, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, and a whole bunch of other things like these. Can I just help 30 people today tap your neighbor and look at him in the eye and say he's talking about you too? We love to stop at half the list. You know, look at them. They need this word today. We be texting friends before the whole list even done. Ooh, girl, you got to watch today. No, he said something for you. You need to watch today. And we miss envy and jealousy and ooh, we, we miss strife. We miss dissension. We miss all these things that he said, no, no, these are also not of the nature of kingdom culture. This is what I love about scripture because it puts all of us in there. We all are in need of the Holy Spirit. Okay, can I make it real plain? Every person on this stage and every person sitting there and every person sitting in your living room, we all can find ourselves on the list. We all can find ourselves. Can I be honest with y'all? I found myself on a list about a year ago in a way I didn't expect. Shelby, I was looking on social media and I was just getting upset. I didn't know what was happening to me, Christina. I was getting frustrated. I was looking at other people's churches, and I was like, look at, look at them. Just look at them. Buying, <laughs> buying bigger buildings and stuff. <laughs> look at them. Ooh, okay. We don't, okay, okay. <laughs> we get it. You didn't have to post three videos about it. <laughs> and the Lord dealt with me and said, maybe the problem is not how I'm blessing them. Maybe you got something off in your nature. Holy Spirit was like, May- maybe... Maybe the problem is you. And the Holy Spirit asked me to unfollow about five leaders because he said the problem has nothing to do with them. The problem is you're battling envy and jealousy, and you need to let me do a work on your heart because the problem, you need to get out their business and what I'm doing for them, and you need to focus on what I'm trying to do in you. The nature of the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you, though, this is the tension. This is the tension. The tension is... It says that these two things are always in what? Conflict because it goes on to tell us what is God trying to produce. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, let's see if we got some Sunday school people in here. The one you need it on the screen is love. Some of y'all fell off at the end too. Y'all was like, that was like singing the black national anthem. You just got to the middle part. And you, you're like, Sing love, joy, peace, kindness, and faithfulness, kindness. And how many did I do? Love, joy, peace, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, goodness, self control. This is what Paul says are the fruits of the Spirit. And I got to wondering, why is it that we don't want that fruit? I mean, I think if I pass the mic around the room, most of us would say, I want more patience. I want to be kind. I want, I want, I want to figure this thing out. But the scripture says our spirit and the sinful nature are what? 
continuously fighting. I want to show you how this looks real quick. I'm going to do this real quick, and then the other two points, I'm going to zoom past. Can I get three volunteers? I need three people real quick. I need three people. Lance, come up here real quick. Come on, come up here real quick. Um, come on up here, Quest. Come on up here, Quest. Come on up here, Quest. I need one more. I need one more. Come on up here. Thank you so much. Y'all make some noise for them as they come. Y'all make some noise for them. Yeah, come right here. Come right uh, You stay right here. You stay right here in the middle. Yeah, you stay right there. You stay right there. Turn this way. Turn this way. Mm -hmm. Amen. God bless you. Stay right there. Yep. You stay right here. You stay right here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. No, no, no. Now turn this way. Turn this way. And then this is a picture of all of our life. A picture of all of our life. Come on in, Quiz. Don't mess up my illustration now. <laughs> this picture of all of our life. Picture of all of our life. Picture of all of our life is the Holy Spirit is looking to dwell within in us. Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit today. God bless you. But we all also have soul. So, which is the place that houses our thoughts, will, and emotions. Our thoughts, our will, and our emotions. But we also got this little thing down here. <laughs> called flesh. Now, flesh is being experienced by all of us each and every day. It's the five senses. It's what you see. It's what you chose to watch. It's what you couldn't avoid to watch because it was just in front of you. It's what you felt. It's what you tasted. And then you tasted it more and then you tasted it more. And in and of itself, that's not problematic. Like, in and of itself, like, it's okay. Like, you know, there's some things that you feel. There's some things that you experience. There's some things you taste. And like, that's cool. But don't miss this. Every time you experience something, your flesh begins a conversation with your soul. It begins a conversation with your soul about, man, you tasted that. That was good. Let's go get that again. You, you, you watch that. You like stuff like that. Let's watch this again. It, it's the thing that happens that makes you say, that felt good. We said we'd only try it once. But it felt so good. Why not try it again? And it begins a conversation with your soul. Now, all of this is not bad. I don't want to be dramatic. Like, you know, like, you know, every now and then my wife, like, she'll give me a kiss before bed. And my will weakens. <laughs> she'll be looking at me like, I did something wrong. I'll be like, you kissed me. <laughs> I want a, no, I want, a, I want a regular kiss. That was a different kiss. My will just went away. I thought I would have more husbands that would say amen right there. Come on, it's right. Sometimes it's like, mm -mm, no, it was 9.30. You shouldn't have kissed me at 9.30. Yeah? You knew. You knew my will is weak. So, flesh speaks to soul. But then something starts to happen. Then something starts to happen because, remember, the flesh, the sinful nature is always at war with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is in our life as well. But the more we start conversing with the flesh and the sinful desire, it said, well, you know, it's not that big of a deal if you do that. So they take a step this way. They take a step in, and they begin a conversation off on their own because what the flesh desires is to get you as far away from the Holy Spirit as possible. So that while God is speaking, you can't be responsive to what the Holy Spirit is trying to get you to do. And so you say, well, you know what? You know, we just went out on two dates, and I know the Holy Spirit is telling me that this is not the right person for me. I know the Holy Spirit is saying, now you know goodness well, their character does not align with the kingdom culture that I'm trying to create in your life. But when we went out, oh, my God, it was such a good time. And now when I wake up in the morning, I don't got time to do a devotional. But I can roll over and check his page to see what he did last night. And so now I'm going to follow the flesh. Oh, the more. And then I tried this and I smoked this. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. And I stayed over one time. And then I did this. And all of a sudden I look up and my distance between the Holy Spirit and my closeness to my sinful desires have grown. And the Holy Spirit is calling out to some of you. He said, I need you to turn. Come on here, man. Turn. And I need you to start a conversation with me again because there is a conflict happening between what I am trying to create in your life and what your sinful nature is craving. And I need you to start walking away from that spirit. Come on, receive the soul, the thoughts, the will. The now watch out now. He got a wife. Now y'all got too close. It was acting that thing out. They got in the care. I say, what's saying that? Hey, I'm sorry. I got you. I'm sorry. I mean, y'all go sit down. No, y'all in character. Y'all are actors. Stuff. I ain't know I pulled up three actors. I just picked three random church members. <laughs> Holy Spirit is drawing some of you back into intimacy, into conversation. Because he said, if you do not return, 
you will not be able to live out my nature. We have an assignment. I want to give you a phrase today that I want you to affirm in your own life throughout this week for each of these, and I'm going to be done in five minutes. Here it is. The first thing I want you to say is this. I am a representative. Say it louder. I am a representative. Now, here's the threat to that truth, that belief system that is supposed to show up in your life. This, this belief system says that I am called to represent another kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. And if we believe that, here's how the enemy attacks that. The threat is individualism. You grown. It's your page. It's your life. It's your body. It's your money. And God is saying, no, 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 we are in partnership to subdue the earth. We are in partnership. You are an ambassador to kingdom culture. And so we have to overcome this temptation to think that all of our actions are just about us. What I do ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. No, that's not true. Somebody's watching you and somebody needs you. To represent kingdom culture, I am a representative. Here's the second one. These second two are going to move real fast. Second two are going to move real fast. The second one is this, the power of kingdom culture. So the fruit that we just talked about has to do with the character of the king. But the gifts that God gives us has to do with the power of the king. So look, God in his greatness says if they are going to carry out their mission, if they are going to establish my government, my will, my culture, on the earth, they're going to need power that goes beyond their own. So God endows us. He authorizes us. And he imparts into us some of his power. Let's see it in 1 Corinthians 12, really quick, 4 through 7. Here's what it says in the message translation. God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. Then he says this, God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere. But God is behind it all. Each person has been given something to do that shows who God is. I want you to hear me loud and clear today. You have a gift from God. You have a gift from God. So here's what I want you to repeat today all through this week. I want you to make this affirmation clear because this is our belief that God tells us I've already given you a gift. Now, I got to align with that gift. I got to use that gift. So here's what I want you to say. Say, I am gifted. Say it again. Say, I am gifted. You have been given a gift by God. And the temptation of the enemy is to make you compare your gift to somebody else. So one person has been given the gift to sing, and you're like, ooh, that would, would be nice. I would love to sing. And God is saying, no, I've given you the gift of administration. Listen to me. Some of these folk up here singing can't do a spreadsheet to save their life. <laughs> Myself included. Some of us have been given the gift of helps. We are just naturally gifted to help people and hurt with them and empathize. Some of y'all, empathy is not your love language. Matter of fact, you're like, don't call me first. <laughs> because it's not the gift that they have been given. Some of us, our gift is leadership. Some of us, our gift, right, is prophecy or, or, or intercession. All of us has been given a gift. Here's the threat to kingdom gifts. Are you ready? Insecurity and irresponsibility. Almost there. Listen to me. Irresponsibility has been one of the greatest threats against the kingdom of God in this generation. Because some of us have seen people misuse their gift. And so as a result of their misutilization of the gift that God gave them based on their ego, based on their irresponsibility, now you say, I don't want that. No, 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 let me hear, help you today. God has gifted you, and you are irresponsible if you don't discover and utilize the gift that God has planted in your life. But here's how the enemy does it. Insecurity. If some of us in this room right now, God is called to great things. But the enemy has planted a seed of insecurity in your childhood that you have not been able to overcome. There's some of you right now saying, mm, I can't pray like them, and I can't do that, and I can't do this. And all it is is the enemy's work against the gift that God has planted in your life. You are gifted. Now, first, you got to discover your gift so that you're not busy being frustrated because God is not blessing a gift that he didn't give you. 
But then once you discover that gift, you got to use that gift to its full potential. And you got to stop allowing people and places and things that tell you you do not belong where God has called you. Can I announce to 30 people today so I go to my last point and get y'all out of here? I just want to announce to you the reason you are qualified to go into every room that God has called you to. The reason why you are capable of walking in your gift even when you ain't got degrees for it. The reason why you are capable of being confident. Here it is. It's because you got a name attached to your gift. It is not about who you are. It's about the name that gave you the gift. If God gave me the gift, I can walk in this room. If God gave me the gift, I belong at the table. If God gave me the gift, I have authority. If God gave me the gift, I got dominion. If God gave me the gift, I can subdue it. God gave it to me. I don't need permission from nobody else. I am gifted. You are gifted. So stop allowing insecurity to rob you of seeing the best that God has to offer you because you got a name to walk in. But we have to understand the power of kingdom culture. Why did he give us these gifts? So that we can bring his kingdom from heaven to earth. Here's the last one. Here's the last one. The power of the kingdom culture. The nature of kingdom culture. And then here's the last one. The influence of kingdom culture. The influence of kingdom culture. I'm closing. Look. God wanted to give each and every one of us a gift and his nature so that we can influence the world around us. You are not just in a neighborhood. You are an influencer of that neighborhood. You are not just an employee. You are called to be an influencer of that workplace. You are not just called to be the soccer mom. You are called to influence the team. You are not just called to this and that. No, I am an influencer. I want you to say this. I am an influencer. I want to show you this in scripture as we close. Acts chapter 2, verse 41 through 47. Look at what happens after the people in the book of Acts receive the Holy Spirit. Those who accepted this message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to the number. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and signs were performed. All the believers were together and they had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had a need every day. They continued to meet together in temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were saved. I want you to see the power of what happens when we allow the Holy Spirit to guide our lives. It started with what happened in their church. They saw people being added to the number, being baptized, growing in their faith, studying the apostles' teaching. And sometimes we stop there as a church. That's beautiful. But the Holy Spirit doesn't just want to bless that. The Holy Spirit also wants to see blessings flow into your homes, into your needs. It said that everybody's needs were met. They shared together. Generosity flowed throughout their community. Hear me loud and clear today. The Holy Spirit wants us to be influencers. For some of you, you're going to be an influencer through your words. For others of you, you're going to be an influencer through your generosity. For some of you, you're going to be an influencer through your kindness. You don't even know the hug that you're going to offer is going to change somebody's life. Man, y'all can come back up. You are called to be an influencer. And here's the threat to being an influencer that God called you to be. Independence. I want you to hear this loud and clear. I think one of the tensions of our time is that many of us are busy declaring our independence from the kingdom of heaven. We don't say it like that with our words, but we say it with the way we live. Lord, I'm good. I love you. I just got my own plans. Lord, I love you. I just got my own agenda. And we declare our independence all the time from God's desires for our life. And God is saying, no, I want to see a kingdom culture emerge. And God wants you to be the influencer that transforms the world around you. Could you close your eyes for 20 seconds? We're about to leave this room. But before we do, I want you to know that God has called you to be an influencer. You are an influencer. I know that term is thrown around today. and There's some who are legitimately influencers. But I want you to understand, for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, you are called to influence so when you leave this room today, when you turn off your phone or your TV today, I want you to make up in your mind the Holy Spirit is not just here to help me promote my agenda. The Holy Spirit has helped help align my actions with heaven's agenda because I am called to be a representative. 
I am called and I'm gifted and I am an influencer. When the world around me asked me, why did you respond that way? Why did you have so much peace? Why did you have so much patience? Why are you that kind? You can declare it's because I do it for another culture. That I'm called to walk in the nature of kingdom culture. That I'm called. That I have the power of kingdom culture resting inside me. I'm called. That I'm called to be an influencer for kingdom culture. I'm called. Lord, I pray now that as your people sit with this word, I pray that the seed of kingdom culture dwells deeply in their hearts. God, I pray that as they leave this room or they cut off their screen and they go out into the world today, that they will live out these affirmations and belief systems that they are representatives, ambassadors of a government of heaven called to introduce it to the earth. That we are called to plant love, joy, peace, kindness, faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control in the earth. We are called. That we are gifted. That no longer will we allow insecurity to rob us of us walking in our true purpose that we will start to claim that because I am a citizen of heaven, I've also been endowed with power from heaven and that we will be the influencers you called us to be for kingdom culture. God, we pray now that we would live this word, breathe this word, and show this word to our neighbors, our friends, our cousins, family members, and everybody we come in contact with, that they might see the culture of our life and say, what must I do? to be saved. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody in agreement said together, amen. Amen and amen. Can you give God one more big hand clap of praise all across the room?